Vittori, you're joining us. Yes, indeed. Hi. I'm here. Thanks for morning. Taking, good morning, Massimo. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. You're uh, moderating Pleasure. the panel on sustainability. Yes, indeed. What are the headlines today? So, uh, first of all, uh, huge interest, uh, a lot of participants. We had uh, some 200 registered participants. And uh, as you can imagine, even this uh, pandemic we are all living uh, is uh, reinforcing uh, the need to deal with sustainability, which means to find a new economic model that can combine economic performances with social and environmental performances. So we have been discussing how geographical indications can contribute to this. And uh, the key messages are for sure, first of all, the GIs are in an ideal position to respond to those challenges because there is uh, already a very important attention to the social component. Uh, the small communities that work together in associations which have a governance, uh, which can ensure a, a fair repartition of the added value among the actors of the chain. Importance also of the environment because uh, uh, GIs cannot be delocalized. So there is an attention, of course, we can do more. And uh, of course, the economic component of sustainability. Uh, we have been discussing the need to have uh, common indicators, the need to speak a common language in order not to dilute the concept itself. So now everybody is speaking about sustainability. Consumers are very interested on that. We need to have common indicators and to have a common language. So we, we don't confuse the consumer. Uh, we have been discussing also the need to um, take into consideration the, the needs of small groups, uh, small producers, small economic actors, which are the majority of actors working on the, in, in geographical indications. Uh, we've been discussing the need of having uh, uh, some uh, objective evaluation. So we've been discussing the controls should be should economic uh, uh, should sustainability criteria be part of the product specification? Should they be then controlled? Should this be compulsory or voluntary? So some uh, interesting questions, and uh, even from the floor, uh, from academia, policymakers from the floor, we had a lot of questions, and we'll continue the discussion tomorrow. Massimo, stay with us, would you, for a moment, please? And uh, we've got uh, Harry Timnik. Uh, he's Deputy Head of Unit at the Director General for Internal Market Industry, Entrepreneurship and SMEs at the European Commission. Nice big long job title. Uh, Harry, good to see you. Uh, your panel Hello. this morning, you're on non-agricultural GIs. What are the headlines there? Well, it was actually a, a unique uh, session because it's the only session in this whole conference that is exclusively dedicated to, to, to uh, the protection of uh, GIs for non-agricultural products. And it was a very timely meeting as well because uh, just today uh, the European Commission uh, announced, uh, will, will uh, uh, adopt uh, an IP action plan with priorities in the area of uh, IP intellectual property for the next uh, years. And there is a section on non-agricultural GIs, and the Commission announces that it is going to consider the feasibility of a, a sui generis system for non-agricultural GIs. So this is actually an opening from the Commission that for the first time we are going to look into this very seriously on the basis of a, an impact assessment. Today, actually, uh, an inception impact assessment will be uh, published today on non-agricultural GIs, and obviously the speakers uh, and the audience uh, 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 took this into account when making their interventions. Uh, I would say that most of the participants were very much in favor of the creation of a sui generis system also for agri uh, non-agricultural products. Uh, the uh, panel discussed the added value of such a system, but also the flaws in comparison with uh, the, the, trade, the current trademark system. Um, the uh, panelists also discussed the implications from an international law uh, perspective, uh, in particular Article 22 uh, uh, of the TRIPS agreement, which does not make a distinction between agricultural and non-agricultural GIs. Uh, obviously, uh, as in a good discussion, it should be. Uh, there were also critical voices uh, from a representative of Swedish businesses. Uh, she felt that uh, uh, basically a generous uh, system is not necessary. Uh, we, we have already sufficient uh, trademark protection, and, uh, but I think the majority of the speakers, as I already said, 
was in favor. We even had a, a speaker, uh, sorry, a, a participants from Australia who even supported uh, the, the, those who spoke in favor of this regenerative system for non-agricultural products okay. in uh, the EU. Okay. Harry, thank you so much. Stay with us. So hopefully, we we'll get back to you in just a moment. We also have Miguel joining us. Uh, Miguel uh, Angel Medina. He's the associate partner, trademark department of El Zaburu. Uh, Miguel, can you hear me? No, he can't. Okay, Miguel, maybe try and come. Uh, there we go. We've got Miguel. Now. Miguel, the headlines from your session today. Hello. Hello. Well, it was a very interesting session. I think it was about how can we protect uh, GIs in the virtual world and how can uh, we avoid uh, uh, countertreat and all, all these uh, problems that they face uh, where they, there is a kind of asymmetry between trademarks and GIs. Not trade, uh, trademark owners have a protection that GI producers do not have. This is something that, I mean, one can understand possibly from the American point of view where trademarks is everything, but that it is uh, difficult to understand from an European culture as the, the one we have where for us GIs are important like trademarks. And, uh, intellectual property and, and patents as well. So uh, right right on, on target with that. What are there any cl clear examples from your session as well uh, to highlight? Well, I think it was uh, a good example was the case of the champagne.co. A domain name where an, uh, a banker in London with no good faith connection uh, was able to the wine trade was able to register uh, a domain name and and the the committee of uh, inter, uh, inter, uh, committee inter, uh, inter du vin de champagne was not able to to get uh, that uh, domain name transferred to the UDRP because uh, GIs are not so respected as a, as okay. a right basis. No? A uh, banker in London with no uh, good connections. That'll be the title of my next book. Uh, just to get the mood music for the the economic perspective, uh, Miguel, what was uh, what was the sense of uh, uh, mood uh, in terms of GIs? Are people positive about the direction this is going? Are they concerned? Enough has not been done. Uh, ask the same to Harry and uh, to Massimo as well. Well, I think it's a it's a, um, a mix. So it's mixed emotions. So I think it's a people is encouraged. They are, uh, I mean, they have hopes and expectations because they know that the European Commission has always been very supportive with GIs. And and that, an example was the the case of the dot vin and dot wine, no? where at least okay. after many years of efforts, things have been achieved. But it's a uh, I mean, also the worry that you see that it takes much time. No? Okay. I, would, I would use, uh, to, to define it, the, the title of a, of a book, um, an inspirational book that once I read, which was that uh, while the difficult takes time, the impossible just takes a little longer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Harry, quick comment. Uh, Massimo, you want to uh, unmute as well. And we've got uh, one minute, then we go back into the sessions again. Harry, mood music at your panel. Uh, yes, well, uh, talking about the economic uh, perspective, um, of course, uh, a three generous system for non-agricultural products would be very much welcomed by smaller uh, businesses, SMEs in remote areas in particular, where they have less power actually to present their good quality products, not only in their own country, but also across borders and even outside the EU. So uh, that was very much highlighted that uh, a three generous GI system for non-agricultural products would benefit SMEs in Europe. Okay, thank you. And uh, last word, Massimo, mood music in your session? Yes, actually, I think it's clear that sustainability is going to be the topic for the next years. And uh, we need, as the panel has showed, cooperation and dialogue with uh, academia, policymakers, GI producers, because it's going to be really a big challenge. But we, we, we can make progress, and uh, it's going to be like uh, an extremely interesting topic for the future. Thank you, Harry, Massimo, Miguel. Thanks so much for uh, taking time to be with us just now and uh, back into the parallel okay. sessions. So you click on the right link on your agenda and we'll speak with you later on. Take care. Thank you. Have a Bye. day. Great.